The Banshees of Inishirin, possibly the best movie of the decade so far. The Banshees of Inishirin, directed by Martin McDonough, stars Colin Farrell, Brendan Gleeson, Cary Condon, and Barry Keehan. The film is hard to categorize upon first glance it's a drama, but it's so incredibly funny and equally sad at the same time. It delivers that rare experience of a true tragedy without resorting to contrived situations or fireworks. It's simple, yet complex and layered. It really is a fantastic movie, and probably be my pick for one of the best of the decade so far. Granted, all the performances in this film are mesmerizing, but Colin Farrell gives the performance of a lifetime, which should bring him great accolades for years to come. As well, Barry Keehan de delivers the hardest punch in a subtle yet heartbreaking scene that will haunt you long after viewing. He delivers a line that will be repeated by people in reference for a long time when talking about this movie. It's probably going to enter our lexicon in terms of cinematic classics. The story is rather simple. It takes place on a desolate island in 1920s Ireland where two lifelong friends have suddenly found a rift between them. Or rather, Colm, played by Brendan Gleeson, decides that he no longer wants to spend any time with Patrick, played by Colin Farrell, stating that he's too dull. Colm is a creative soul who yearns for solitude and Patrick is a simple, easygoing guy who loves animals and considers himself nice. He shares a house with his sister Siobhan, who acts as a conduit between the two friends. Patrick cannot figure out why Colm has decided he no longer wants to be friends, not accepting that Colm wants to have more time to write music, and this sends Patrick into a tailspin of confusion, anger, and at times despair to learn the reasoning why his friend has forsaken him. Colm just continues on with his straight face, emotionless reasoning which drives Patrick to investigate further into his motivations, believing his friend is going through a phase of depression. The fact these two live in such a tiny community makes it even more perplexing as they pass each other on the country roads, see each other at the local pub, and Patrick can't accept living life like this while Calm seems to be content with causing such distress for personal gain. One of the reasons being he wants to write a classic song that will be remembered for generations, and he feels that his life is too short. As time goes on, Calm resorts to more extreme methods to scare away Patrick until a rift spreads to more people within the community, and other characters are forced to confront their own personal problems. It creates this cascade effect, and Patrick slowly descends into a world-weary man who's lost his niceness. Each character changes who they are, and for the exception of Siobhan, they don't change for the better. That's where the tragedy element plays a part. It's truly sad to see Patrick's character lose that spark that makes him a happy man, and two friends become strangers only a few doors apart. This is where the acting really shines in this movie. The backdrop to all this is the real events of the Irish Civil War, which hovers over the heads of the characters. But due to their distance, it doesn't affect them too severely. You only hear cannons in the distance from the mainland, or occasionally someone would leave the island to do some work related to the struggle. At one point a character mentions, wasn't it simpler when we fought the British and not each other? This sort of summarizes a lot of the elements of the story. The point of the story could be discussed by film school or playwright students for decades to come. On the surface, it's a simple story about friends who've grown apart, or perhaps the Deep down, it's a metaphor for the various conflicts and struggles of the people of Ireland. Two neighbors, lifelong friends, suddenly find themselves at odds with each other, and there's no fixing it or putting it back together. They just agree to exist beside each other, but that could change at the drop of a hat. The acting, the screenplay, the direction are all top-level artistry, but the cinematography by Ben Davis is breathtaking. It's probably hard to make Ireland look bad, but you cannot help but want to visit this place when you see the rolling grassing hills and distant peaks while the dark ocean rages beside this quaint village. Davis has previously worked on some huge projects like Guardians of the Galaxy and the Matthew Vaughn films, big action projects, and a lot of the other Marvel movies. But this is classic cinematography that sticks to the old school principles of not distracting away from the actors. It lets them shine. McDonough's screenplay is a masterclass in subtext and allegory. The entire movie is literally just a series of conversations all around this small setting. It's where you can see McDonough's background in theater really shine through. Yet, it's incredibly cinematic and its direction is pure perfection. This is a guy at the top of his game without going overboard with any hysteronics or melodramatic gimmicks. When the tragedy hits, it's really jarring. In this current cinematic landscape where the bigger the movie, the more credible it is, this is a breath of fresh air because it's an old-fashioned, well-told story directed perfectly with actors who seem to relish the script. The irony is this was released under Fox's Searchlight imprint, which is all owned by Disney now, the biggest modern culprit of blockbuster dominance. One can only hope they can keep giving movies like this a chance in the future. If it wins best 
best picture, then most definitely. As for the ending and the meaning of it all, Patrick states he will never let go of how his friend has treated him. What seems like a friendship ending turns into a war between two men. Perhaps that's the point of it all and the oldest story of mankind itself. It's my pick for best movie of 2022 and should be a shoe in for best screenplay and best actor for Colin Farrell. The Banshees of Inishirin is already a classic movie in my mind and like I said before, I think it's one of the best of the decade so far and in terms of all the movies I've seen this year, previously I thought All Quiet on the Western Front was my favorite but this one by far is the best one and I'll be viewing it a few times in the future. So we'll hopefully see in March whether or not it wins Best Picture. So anyways, thanks for watching. Leave a comment below your thoughts on the movie or your pick for Best Picture of 2022. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more reviews, news, and tidbits about movies new and old. Also, check out our physical media store, TerminalCityCollectibles.com.